Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's 30 at 3 Live. What we're going to be covering here today will be forcing connections. Uh, this was a feature that was added to SDS2 Connect here in the last version that we released, so I uh, kind of wanted to cover that this week and make sure that everyone kind of understands how this actually functions, you know, what can we do with it, that sort of thing. So um, just want to point out here, I do have a view filter set up. I uh, showed you this in last week's webinar, how we can set up view filters to display our different failed connections and colors. I have mine set up to be in orange so we can kind of see a couple that are there in orange with our failed connections. Okay, so uh, what we're going to actually be doing with this force, uh, this really just allows users to override a failed connection. So when you see that failed connection, um, you can click the force option and have SDS2 connect basically uh, put in a connection at the last point it designed it before it saw that it, it uh, was a failed connection and, and ran out of uh, different options to try and design you a connection. Okay, so a um, couple things to mention with that. Even though I do force a connection, uh, it still has to be a connection that SDS2 Connect actually supports or is capable of designing. Um, just because you force it, if it's not capable of designing it, it, it still can't create a connection for an unsupported connection. Um, uh, so with that, let's go ahead and take a look at what we actually do to force the connection then. So in the connection edit window, I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at the brace here that we see, and I'll edit this connection. Okay, and we're going to see the failed message down here at the bottom. In this case, tells us maximum guess at thick thickness exceeded. Um, so if I come up here to the little force checkbox, okay, and I check that, notice I get here by my loads, I get the maximum here. So this is the connection capacity that is actually in there right now. Notice it is less than the load that I do have applied here. So the 136.6 kips tension is, le is more than my capacity is showing. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Typically, when you're forcing connections, what's created is not sufficient for the loads applied. Uh, that's not always the case, but typically is why I say that. Okay, so now if I go ahead and say okay to this window here, just so you can see, we now have a connection in there for us. So this then allows me to go into the design details if I edit that connection again. So now I can go into the design details. I can make adjustments to whatever I need then myself to accommodate for the additional load go in there, make changes. Um, and as I do make those changes, the uh, design calculations are going to update and use the values that I were to input in here um, as the limit states that it reports and uses on the design calculations. So as we print those out, we'll see that information come across on there. Okay, so the other thing to take note then in that case is that notice the user connection up here in the upper right hand corner is also checked. Okay, remember user connection does have to be checked before design details can be modified. Um, when you check force, that automatically checks the user connection box there also. Uh, you also notice a little redesign button up there. I'll cover that here in just a little bit. So I'm going to move on over to another little connection here. And I'm just going to look at these uh, short beams down here. And I'm going to force 
this connection over here towards the right end of the, the orange beam that's highlighted right now. So I'll edit this connection. And in this case, my, uh, my failed message tells me web doublers are not supported for sloped beams. So this is telling me that in this particular case, SCS2 Connect uh, doesn't actually create web doublers for sloped beams. However, through the design calcs and its checks, it's seeing that doublers are required. So I'm going to go ahead and force that. Notice my connection capacity here again is less than what's applied. So I'm going to say OK just so we can see we actually do have the connection that's created for us there. Now, maybe I could go in here and add extra rows of bolts or whatever I need. In this case, what I'm going to do is go into the design details. User connection is already checked for me. And I have a Beam Web Doubler Info tab in here. And I can go ahead and input my own web doublers then. So input my information here. Top of plate, I'll go win one inch. Plate depth, I'll make six. Width, I'll just go four. I'll say three sixteenths of an inch. And let's go ahead and put that on both sides of my web. Say OK. And we do have a little issue here in this case right now. Um, it's already been reported, but you do see the, the angle does clash with our web doubler. Um, it's already been reported, so hopefully we'll see that fixed in a future version. But now, if I just want to go ahead and take a look at my design calculations, so I use my report, print that out here. If I go ahead and scroll down here, take a look at my limit states. Um, actually, let me back up here. So my design load is 26.3 kips shear. We can see that there. Take a look at my limit states. Everything here appears to be above 26.3. So we can see by adding those web doublers, SDS2 Connect is actually using the values of what I input into those design details for this. You do see the user connection here, so it calls out a user connection, kind of just alerting us to that. We can also actually see the values used if we take a look at the extended report. Okay, we'll also see the information in here. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I believe is where my um, web doubler information is at, so we can see our web doubler bolt bearing, all that. Okay, so kind of get a, a feel for just an idea of what we're doing here with forcing. So the way I've been using it right now is to force the connection and then modify it through design details to accomplish a connection that's sufficient for my design loads. You may also just use force so that you can take a look at the design calculations and see where SDS2 Connect is actually failing it, so it can be just used as a uh, troubleshooting tool for connections, and then you could make adjustments maybe through connection specifications, or maybe you could adjust a setup option, something like that, to help out with that connection. Um, so the last thing I want to take a look at here is just to show you guys that not all failed connections, or excuse me, forced connections, are insufficient for the loads. I'm going to give you a couple examples here. Uh, they, one of them is probably more common of a situation than the other one. Um, so this particular situation here where I have the sloped beam uh, coming into this column at a skew, um, I'm going to go ahead and edit this connection. And the failed message I get says invalid skew to column connection geometry. Well, I kind of know um, that this is just a, a bit of a limitation of SDS2 Connect in the way that we're framing into this column. Uh, it doesn't quite know exactly what to do, um, which brings up kind of another point uh, to help you guys out. And I've mentioned this before in the past, you know, as you're working with SDS2 Connect, it's really, uh, you really got to keep your eyes open and uh, learn what and how 
uh, the system actually reacts to different things. Um, it's really going to help you out in the long run and, and get comfortable with using this this connection design add-in. So um, again, I kind of know this from experience that this is kind of a limitation of the software. Uh, what I'm going to do here, however, I'm going to change the connection type to a bent plate. And I'm going to go into connection specifications. I'm going to change this so we're welding the bent plate to the supported member. And I just want this on one side of my beam web. I'm going to say the near side. And I'm going to go ahead and force that. Okay, so when I force this connection, I'm going to get something that looks a little funny. Okay, and you will see this from time to time with failed connections. When you're forcing um, these, it's not always, again, generating something that is 100% is useful. This, however, if I look at it, I can kind of tell uh, what's it look like it's doing here with this bent plate. The way it's bent, it looks to me like it's almost trying to frame into the web of that column. Okay. Well, if it's trying to frame into the web of that column right now, what if I were to just temporarily rotate this column 90 degrees? So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I need to basically regenerate this connection, the bent plate connection here. So I'll go ahead and edit that. And here I'm going to use this redesign button. So basically, uh, by hitting redesign now with the force checked, it's completely redesigning that connection. If I were to have made any changes in the design details like I did with the previous connection in that web doubler, it would override those uh, and probably clear most of those uh, changes that I made. In this case, I didn't make any changes in design details, so I'm not too worried about it. I'll go ahead and hit redesign. Now I'll say OK. And now it looks like we got that, so it looks like it should be framing into our uh, flange. I'll go ahead and rotate that column back to where it should be. Okay, and now we got our bent plate connection framing to my column. Just to take a look real quick at the design calculations, I'll go ahead and run the report on that. Okay, here's our design load. We just have a, a six kips on there. And if we take a look at my limit states, looks like everything that we got uh, so far is above that six kips. So again, an example of where forcing a connection may give you a uh, sufficient connection. We had to work around it a little bit, but that's why I said before that, you know, kind of keep your eyes open, pay attention, and, and learn really how uh, the connection design works sometimes. It's going to help you out in the long run. Um, so the last thing that I want to just kind of demonstrate to you here is I have a horizontal brace with, I have one connection on one end over here. My connection over here is being failed. So if I edit this connection, my failed connection tells me the brace to beam angle is less than 20 degrees. Uh, so AISC has uh, kind of a, a rule about uh, the dihedral angle to beams being less than 20 degrees. So SDS2 Connect goes ahead and fails a connection less than 20 degrees like this for a horizontal brace to a beam. We can, however, go ahead and just simply force that connection and just take a look at the design, uh, excuse me, the maximum connection capacity here, the 50.93 kips. It's greater than 31. I could go ahead and say OK, and there we get our connection. So. This one, sometimes I, I kind of see this one more typically than I would with that bent plate, but it's a couple good examples for you, so uh, two there for you. So that's forcing connections. 
Um, what I'll do now is I'm going to go ahead and just open this up to questions here so you can use the questions pane on the GoToMeeting toolbar. If you have anything, go ahead and type it in there. I'll try and answer it for you best I can. Uh, can be related to the forcing connections that we looked at here today or if you have any other questions SDS2 Connect related, feel free to throw those out there as well. I know somebody's got to have a question. Okay, so somebody asked a question here. Um, are there connections for the Joyce and Joyce girders? Um, currently, with SDS2 Connect, we do not actually do any connection design for the joists at this point. Um, we will, if you're utilizing the round tripping capabilities between SDS2 and Revit, uh, we will transfer the joist members, uh, but as far as the connections within Revit with SDS2 Connect goes, Right now we do not uh, design any of those connections, so if I just kind of zoom in there and uh, show you here, okay, we can see we're not getting any connections on that. So like I said, they're transferred with the round trip, no connection design for them though. So another question here is, uh, is there a way to save a connection and reapply it as needed throughout the job? Currently, there is not a way to do that. Um, we do have some tools within SDS2 that does that. Uh, I hope at some point here in the future that we will get similar tools like that incorporated into Connect uh, to where we could kind of save a connection off and just apply that to others, but currently um, we cannot do that. Um, another question here is, are there plans to make connect cut holes in beams? Uh, as far as I'm aware, at this point, we, we don't actually have plans to make it uh, cut, do the actual holes in anything. Um, kind of the reason behind that is uh, the way and the tools that we have right now. Even a small building like this, if you have holes in every one of those connections, or for every one of those connections on each end of the beam, uh, it really affects the performance of Revit. So um, at this point, I don't believe there's any plans to do that. Um, shop drawings, again, uh, it, it's not a true manufacturing model, so you can't really do shop drawings in Revit structure. Um, you know, one example of it here would be like the Copes on the ends of the uh, sloped beams here that we were looking at earlier. Uh, right now there's not a, a really a way to correctly and easily portray the uh, correct copes here. We're taking them into account through connection design and I can actually see that in the edit window if I look at my end prep information here. We can see we have a cope applied, we have the we figure out the size that it needs to be and all of that. We just can't physically display it. Um, so it's not a, a true manufacturing model and it wouldn't be uh, good to use for shop drawings. So you can transfer that all that information directly to SDS2. Everything would be applied in there, shown correctly, um, and then you can automatically create shop drawings from there. But directly in Revit, no. OK, 
Okay, do we have any more questions? So I think uh, there was a question earlier about showing us how to cope the low end of the beam at the hip member. Uh, I believe you're talking about that. I think I kind of covered that with uh, that question or that answer there for the, the last question. Uh, we are taking it into account. We're figuring that. Um, all the design calculations and everything has that noted and takes it into account. We just can't physically display it here. So. Okay, I'll wait another minute here if anybody has any questions here, last chance. If not, um, remember you guys can always uh, feel free to email me. Uh, best way to do that would be to email support at sds2connect.com. Uh, somebody here will, will try to answer your question the best they can. So. No more questions. We're going to go ahead and cut it off for today. Uh, thanks, to everybody, for attending, and hope to see you next time.